Well, today we're driving a Toyota Rad 4. It's a 99. The complaint behind this one was, is there's some kind of clicking in the front end when driving. I'm not hearing no clicking. The steering's loose. And I just don't know where to go with this at the current moment. Other than we'll have to wait until we get her home and, uh, you know, jack her up and pull the front wheels off this thing and see what in the world is going on. So let's get this baby to the house and get her in the garage and get her up on jack stands and let's check out the front end of this thing. Uh, how they were talking to me, it sounded like a wheel bearing, but right now I have no clue. So let's get it home. Okay, so the Toyota RAD4 is in the garage. The wheels are off of this thing on both sides. Everything looks to be fine on this side from what I can see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if we come over here to this side. Oh, there's the problem. That's the clicking issue that they're going to be hearing. And uh, we're going to need a new CV axle. Hopefully, the parts store can get me one in quick. So, let's make some calls first before we start tearing this thing apart. Okay, so looking through all this, we won't have the part till tomorrow, but we're going to start with taking off the tie rod end just by taking off the nut and uh, pulling out the clip. And then we'll use a hammer and we'll, we'll tap right there and pop that up. <laughs> and then we'll go for our lower ball joint down there and then we'll get some taps to that pry that up we'll take off our front nut right here and pull that out and then we should be able to get back there with the pry bar and pop her out and then next thing you know the cvx will be out so i'm going to get onto that right now won't do a step by step but that's how it's going to go step by step so let's get on to this oh it's day two on this cv axle and I haven't even went up to the garage yet, but dang. Looks like I'm going to need to change some valve seals in the truck. Let's get up to the garage and get this CV axle out because it's being a pain. Okay, I'm having a problem pulling this CV axle, but I pulled out the three lower fasteners here. They're 17 millimeter, and then you pick pry bar and pry the lower control arm down. And then, you know, you get it out of the way, and it's pressed out of the way. Well... Can you see what I got going on here? They don't give you much room to take a pry bar up under there. So this is the method that I'm going to take. Not a lot of people are going to be able to do this, but you know, I'm just <laughs> running out of options and I really want to get this thing out of there. So I took a piece of angle, <laughs> welded it to the one end of the CV shaft. And yeah, don't forget, disconnect your battery. And then I took a lug nut and put it there. And now what I'm going to do so I'm going to stick my port power in here with the rubber mallet on the transmission. And then I will slide this in there. So let's get that. So like so, now hopefully we'll be able to pry this thing out. Nope, it's going to slip off. A little bit of better mounting position for it. I hate doing stuff like this because a lot of people don't really have the resources to do it this way. But that clip is just being a pain. Well, I got tension on it, but it's not prying out still. Huh. Maybe I'll get up under there and tap it a few times. All right, since I uh, got up under there and tapped on it a few times, it finally has came out. So there it is. Kind of sucks that I had to do it that way, but that clip was really holding her in. Well, my gear in the shot. That clip was really holding her in. So, yeah out woohoo victory so what we'll do is we'll just slide a new one in there it'll catch in there and uh just 
reassemble those accordingly. So probably not the technique a lot of mechanics like to see you take when trying to remove a CV axle, but you know, it is what it is. And I had to get it out and I was tired of he hauling around trying to pry on it. I only pried on it for probably like 15 minutes and it would not come. And that was under a lot of pressure. And then I got up under there and tapped it a couple times with a bar and it finally popped out. So, you know, you got to do what you got to do to get things taken apart. And I didn't hurt anything, so whatever. You know, if I had a slide hammer, I could have got up in there and popped it out with a slide hammer. But I don't have a slide hammer. And that's probably something I'm going to look at investing in next. Because every so often I see that it could be useful for me. So, you know, you just got to keep up upgrading tools and getting new ones. So... That's how I got this one out, and nobody's going to like it, so whatever. But the video is what it is, and uh, comment, rate, subscribe. Hit that like button. It's down here, down here, okay? And the subscribe button's down here, so, you know. Catch you on the flip side later on.